G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another C Sharp tutorial. We're gonna round off our operators videos with the second part. I did lie in the first one. We're actually going to be covering three more categories of operators, namely relational operators, logical operators, and bitwise operators. For that third category, bitwise operators, you're going to need to have a bit of knowledge when it comes to binary, namely sort of how to read it and what it does, okay? I have linked three videos down the description, the part one of our operators, if you missed it, and two videos about converting from decimal to binary and binary to decimal, and that will give you a little bit of understanding, but probably not enough, okay? But anyway, I wanna jump straight into this. I've left the variables there from last time, A and B with 11 and five, and we're gonna get cracking into relational operators. So relational operators tell you the relationship between two different values, okay? It looks on the left side and the right side, and it gives you nothing but a true or a false, depending on what the values are. So to actually show you what the first one looks like, we're gonna do what's called an equal to. Right, it's pretty straightforward. I wanna check if A and B have the same value, okay? That might be stupid because I can actually see they have different values, but, if you are getting values, let's say from a text file or a user, sometimes you have to check. So the way you write it is A equals B, just like that. You may think I've made a typo there with a double equals, but a single equals is assigning a value to a variable. A double equals is comparing two variables to see if they are the same. So I'm just gonna hit start and we can have a look at the value and you can see it's false. So obviously 11, is not equal to B, so it produces a false, okay? There are five more operators, and we're gonna quickly go through those at the moment. Just as there is an equal to, there is a not equal to, and it's a pretty simple one. You put an exclamation mark and then an equals, and that reads not equals, okay? So it's gonna see if they're different values, just like so. We get a false for the equal, but obviously a true because they're not the same number. And let's do four more. I'm not gonna do them too quickly. Let's explain them as we go. We've got a less than or equal to. Okay, and you write it with a less than symbol then an equal symbol. And that reads less than or equal to. That's gonna check if the A value has a smaller number than B or the same number. Okay, and then we've got another one which is probably gonna be pretty straightforward. Greater than or equal to. And instead of having a less than symbol, you use a greater than symbol, just like so. Now you can see again, A is obviously a larger value, so we get false for the less than, and A is a larger value, so we get a true for the greater than. So pretty straightforward. Two more operators, and we've already sort of covered them. The first one is less than. Okay, so notice that we dropped the or equal to part. So you simply write a less than. You don't include an equal symbol there at all. And then the last one we've got there is a greater than, which is simply that symbol there. Okay, and that's pretty much it when it comes to relational operators. Okay, I can run that. The values are pretty straightforward. If you wanna play around with those symbols, all you really need to do is play around with the values of your different variables, okay? And you're just gonna get different results, obviously, each time, because it's comparing the relationship between A and B. Okay, but the next set of operators is our logical operators. Now basically their job is to make relational operators a lot more powerful than they are. And to show you how they work, I wanna introduce another variable C and I'm gonna give it the value of six. Okay, so let's quickly just take this equal to here. And instead of comparing two variables at a time, we're gonna be comparing three at a time. And I'm gonna check if they're all equal to first. So in other words, A is equal to B, is equal to C, okay? Now you might think straight away to write something like this. Now unfortunately, you're gonna get a squiggly line because what's happening is this little relationship is being checked first and that's producing a false. And then what you're doing is you're asking, is false equal to C? Now you just can't check that in C sharp, okay? You can't say, does the value false equal a number? Doesn't make sense to C, to C sharp. I'll finish that sentence one day. So we have to do it the long way. And the long way is going to be using these bad boys, okay? Now I'm not gonna check it the ultra long way, but it's gonna keep it simple. So we're checking A is equal to B and, that's how those read, just the word and, B is equal to C, okay? And that's checking that all the values are the same as each other. So if I run that, obviously I'm gonna get a false because 
None of my values are equal to each other. Okay, I'm just going to put a right line here. Whoa. Right line. I just want an empty spot above it. And obviously we then have something opposite. So this is actually the logical operator. I didn't really specify that, sorry. That's the logical operator. And it means we have to have two relations that are exactly the same. So they both must be true, the whole thing to become true. So just to break it down, if this was to be true and this becomes true, the whole thing becomes true at that point. Okay, so that's how C-sharp processes those relation and logical operators there. Now, if for example, that one was false, just one side, that means the entire thing becomes false at that point, okay? It has to be both or we don't get true at all, okay? I'll undo those for a moment. And the opposite of all of the being equal is just having at least one of them being equal, so some of them. And we'll introduce two vertical lines. Well, I've held shift and pressed a key above my enter key. Yours might be slightly different to mine, but this is an or. So the way that end works is both sides must be true. The way that or works is either side can be true. For example, if I run it, we're gonna have false again because none, none of the equals, sorry, none of the numbers equal each other. See, I got it out eventually. But now I've got B and C as the same number. It's true. Now I know for some of you, you're probably thinking, well, I'm not comparing A to C. No, I'm not. Feel free to do that though, okay? Because I've got one more operator to show you before we move on to bitwise. We have what's called, and this is a little bit awkward because it's not the same as the end and the or. It's called not. And I'm actually gonna drop that. I'm just gonna have A equals B. So we know from all of our little tests, A equals equals B gives us false. Well, I don't like false. I like it to say true. What I do is I just put brackets around my little relationship operator and I use this not operator on the front. What not does is it takes your true or false and it flips it. So for example, if this comes to false like it will, not false is true. And not true is going to be false. So in this particular example, if I run the program, you should see the not says true. And that's our three logical operators. We have the and, or, and the not. The cool thing about these operators and you, is you can use them as much as you want, okay? Now I've used lots of things here. We could actually get pretty complicated and use lots of different relationship operators. It's entirely up to you. I'm gonna undo that though, because it looks ugly as. I just wanted to quickly show that. Now we're up to the third part of the video. We're gonna need a little bit of background knowledge when it comes to binary. I wanna quickly write in a few little comments here. Now we've got the value of 11. I actually wanna change that to 12 for the moment because I want a specific binary number. And I'm gonna change B to six and I'm gonna forget about C. I'm not gonna use him anymore, but I'm not gonna delete him either. If I was to convert 12 into binary, I'd be left with 1100. Okay, if I then convert six into binary, I would be left with 0110. Okay, bitwise operators all have to do with comparing the binary values that you're given, okay? So the first one is gonna be fairly straightforward. Okay, okay, this is the end bitwise. And all we do there to write it is just like a plus or a minus, you go A and B. Now this is completely different from the logical operator. This is entirely to do with binary. Okay, what it's going to do, this is actually going to go through one bit at a time in each of these numbers and compare the ones and the zeros, okay? So for an example, it's going to compare this one to the zero. If two ones appear, a one pops out the other side. Okay, that probably doesn't make much sense at the moment. But bear with me, okay? So for example, the end is going to result in a zero because there's a one and a zero. We need two ones. This one's got a one and a one, so that's going to produce a one. A zero and a one, that's a zero, and a zero, zero gives us a zero. This is going to be the result of my and bitwise operator. So if I run that, we get a value of four. Okay, and that makes sense, that's the way it works. If you watch my videos or you know binary, you'll know that that bit there has a value of four. So that's how we know it worked. Now we have an and bitwise, we have an or bitwise as well. And the or bitwise is very similar, it's just one vertical line. 
So the way it's going to work now, I'll get rid of this guy and replace it with that, is if there's just at least one one, so if A1 appears, we get a one on the result. So there's a single one there, two ones there, single one there, and no ones. Okay, but that is going to produce a 14 because we have an eight, a four, and a two. Add all those up, that's 14. So that's how the or bitwise operator works. Okay. Okay, so this next bitwise operator is called the X or exclusive or bitwise operator. And you simply use the shift six key, so it's the arrow that's pointing up, also known as the power key as well. So what exclusive or does is it gives you, so I'm gonna get rid of that one, put the exclusive or operator, it gives you a one when the numbers are different. So one and zero are different, you get a one. One and one are the same, so you get a zero. Same thing for the next one, is a zero and one, you get a one. And then zero and zero are the same, so it produces a zero. So exclusive or looks for bits that are different as you go along. So this is an eight and a two, so that's gonna produce a 10. All right, now we have a couple more operators. This next one here, we only need a single variable on it, okay? And it's not even close to these last three guys. He's called one's complement. Okay, and I'm just gonna use A for this one. So remembering A is 12 at the moment. And I use the tilde key for this one. You simply put a tilde in front of the A and that performs what's called one's complement on our A variable. And you'll see we get minus 13. So the way that works is one's complement is a way that computers represent negative numbers. It takes all the ones and the zeros and it flips them upside down. Okay, so for example, we've got one, one, zero, zero. A one's complement on that would go zero, zero, one, one. That's the result of the one's complement. Now things get a little bit more complicated because integers are 32 bits long. So that means we've got all these zeros. Now that's probably not 32, but this is actually what my 12 would look like in memory. So when I flip all that, all those become ones, those become zeros, and those become ones. And in that particular answer, we get negative 13. Okay, when I produce a one's complement video, I'll be happy to post it and give you a little bit more information about that. Otherwise, do a quick search for it. Now, the next one is called a left bit shift. Okay, what it's going to do is it's going to move the ones and zeros a certain amount of spaces. So I'm just gonna use A again for this one. I'm gonna do A, left shift, two. So it's gonna move all my bits two to the left, all right? and you see we get 48. So the way that worked is it's taken all of my bits here, and it's basically added a couple of extra zeros on the front, it's pushed them to the left. I hope that makes sense. All right, and the way it's getting, gotten that value is because one, two, four, eight. So it's 16 and 32 are our numbers. You add 16 and 32, you get 48. All right, so that's how the left shift works. And we do have an equivalent, or an opposite I should say, Instead of a left shift, we right shift, and that means these ones will get pushed to the right, and our 12 now look like this, 0, 0, 1, 1. So that'll produce a three. Okay. So you may not have a particular use for these bitwise operators, but it's always nice to know about all the different things that exist in programming languages from the get-go, because if you ever do see them in other people's projects, you have an idea of what they are. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this video, everybody. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at how to get input from the user, and I'm sure you've all been hanging on for that one. I would like to thank you for watching the video and think about liking, subscribing, and commenting down the bottom. But for now, my name's Nick Dingle, and I'm signing off until the next video.